Let's paint a portrait of V from BTS. Here's another image in my BTS portrait series. The series was themed around their song Black Swan and the references I used came from the song's music video. I usually try my best to capture the likeness of my subject early on, but I'm not gonna lie, I know for a fact that I almost finished this image thinking it was spot on, only to go back and have to make a bunch of changes and even almost start again. This is, again, an example of how I was painting what I think I see instead of what I was actually seeing. This is something that often happens when you've been looking at the same drawing and image for too long. To attempt to reset my brain and my eyes, I often tend to flip or mirror my canvas and my reference image. That forces me to see the image with fresh eyes, as it's not the orientation I started off with. The thing is, sometimes I forget to do this as often as I should, or I get too used to how it looks in both versions. So in this case, it was even more helpful to take a break from the image and come back to it later. This is something I did often in this series, as I ended up working on one portrait one day, and I worked on another the next day. Doing this allowed me to come back to each of the images with fresh eyes, but it also let me apply what I learned from the other portraits, as well as it made sure that the whole series had a consistent look. After working with the series for a while and struggling to find some of the issues in the portraits, I ended up taking a slightly different approach to what I've done in the past. I created a new document and I copied in the portrait which was then overlaid with a reference image which was scaled up so they were both the same size. This new image was then used as an additional reference image so it wasn't used for tracing or anything like that. It was just another tool to help highlight where proportions and placements were off so I could go in and make the amends. It was very important for me to make sure the style and colours were consistent throughout the series. To do this, I made sure to save my colour palette in Procreate, which made it so much easier to pick them out when needed. I also copied all the brushes I was using and placed them in a collection specific to this project. This way, the brushes used are readily available and there is no need to go searching for them in several different brush collections. Procreate also has this nifty feature where you can save specific brush sizes and opacities. This is really useful when you use one brush size for details and another for more coverage. And likewise, if you're using one opacity for line work and another for shading. That paired with different brush collections, you can really save yourself a lot of work when you create a series of images, or if you need to make amends on an image weeks or months later. If you have any questions regarding my process, please let me know in the comment section. There shouldn't be any surprise to the people who follow me that my painting app of choice is Procreate. However, I know that it isn't everyone's preference, especially as it's only available on iOS. There are plenty of other art and design apps out there and I've tried a few and I've ended up preferring this specific app for painting in particular. And I find that when creating art, it's very much about using what you have at hand, which often tends to be what you're most happy and most comfortable with. And that goes both for digital and traditional mediums. I'd love to hear what kind of medium, art supply and favourite art app you prefer, so please feel free to share that in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. More process videos are up on my YouTube channel and check out my social media accounts and my website for more of my work.